they will push your buttons they will push your buttons and i feel like there's something about a work environment that also brings out the worst in people nine out of ten times if you're a decent human being you're not looking for conflict in the workplace but it will find you <laughs> friends, it's Linda Wusha here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we're going to be talking about office conflict. Now the reason why I picked this particular topic is because one, it seems to be generally unavoidable. Wherever you work, be it a restaurant, be it an office, maybe you are a professional footballer, who knows, you know, <laughs> wherever you are and there are personalities, there is pressure and there is some sort of restriction or constriction there will be personality clashes, conflict, fights, arguments, you name it. Now, the aim of this video is to teach you how to handle those. Because one thing that happens in the workplace is that you'll be assigned a supervisor or team leader or someone who is meant to teach you the skills of the job. But there's no one who's going to really sit with you and teach you how to handle other people, how to handle difficult emotions and how to conduct yourself in the workplace. Um, the unfortunate thing about this is usually if you do get those kinds of lessons, it's happening in retrospect. You've usually done something or ended up in a situation where there was um, where there was a disagreement or there was a fight and now it's coming to you in a negative light. So rather I would do preventative teaching and teach you guys things that you should know. But, you know, if you've already been in this type of situation, it doesn't harm you to learn how to handle yourself better. Okay, so I'm going to teach you three R's, and the first of those R's is restraint. As soon as you feel provoked, that is your trigger to restrain yourself. I know this might not come naturally to you, so it takes a bit of practice. Don't beat yourself up for not being able to do this right away. It's taken me some time to learn because I am a very talkative person, as you can tell, and I've had to teach myself this quite a bit. Um, still not perfect, but I'm definitely proud of where I am today. And that is to say that in the act of restraining yourself, you do one of a couple of things. One, you remove yourself from a situation, get up and have a cigarette if you're a smoker, whatever, go for lunch, go to the restroom, um, ask to be excused from a conversation or a phone call. You can just pretend there's an emergency if you can feel that now you are about to get um, agitated or you're about to be taken out of character, as they say. Um, the wonderful thing about restraint is that, one, you're not ignoring the person, so you will get back to them. Because one thing, ignoring someone in the workplace is definitely an offense for a lot of people and for a lot of workplaces. Because you need to give that person feedback or you also need to let them know that, hey, I didn't like the way you spoke to me. So restraint is not to say that you're becoming a mat they can walk over. It's to say that you're going to take time out. Now, the reason why, you know, we can't snap back and be quick witted in the workplace is because one, there are other people around us and they are important. We need to respect them as well. Having a fight in the middle of a conference room or something, you know, you are disregarding and disrespecting the other people around you because they're also trying to work and you need to respect their space. You're not in your own home or in your backyard. Two, Sometimes things are taken out of context or a person speaks out of turn. When you restrain yourself, you allow for that moment to dissolve and for that person to think about what they said to you. You know, some people might, you know, say things just um, on the fly and they realize, hey, I didn't say this in the right way or that wasn't cool and come back and apologize to you. Now, when you don't restrain yourself, you miss that opportunity of reconciliation. Third thing about restraining yourself is that it allows you to formulate a response that fits the situation. <laughs> you know, sometimes something will happen and unfortunately our response will take up the majority of the situation. People won't even recognize what that person said because we came back with such a heavy handed response. So it's important to scale your response to think about your response. And again, this is not to say that you take it quietly and, you know, don't revert back. This is just to say, hey, pull yourself back and think about how you're going to respond. Um, the second 
of my three R's is report, 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 report. I don't know how many times I say this to people, report early and report at your soonest convenience. Because one thing about the workplace is, you know, people might remember what happened vaguely, but if you don't report it, it's not on record and it's not there for someone to refer to. And it's also not there for someone to take up your issue. You know, as a manager, let's say, um, if one of my juniors says something to me in passing that, hey, I don't like how so-and-so spoke to me, you know, I might make it a note that, hey, these two are, you know, having a bit of an issue. I'll keep an eye out for it. But if my junior sends me an email and says, by the way, today, so-and-so said this, you know, I can keep that email somewhere and file it. I can refer to it at a later date. I can make time to go back to it and say, actually, let's sit down and have this meeting. I have it in writing, what you said or what happened, and I can refer to it. So reporting is not only helpful to you, it's helpful to management, it's helpful to HR to handle your situation accordingly. Some people don't want to report because they're afraid of being seen as a snitch or whatever. Listen, if someone is giving you a difficult time and making it difficult for you to do your job you need to report that that's your responsibility you were hired for a specific reason and if someone's behavior attitude treatment towards you is now impeding on your ability to do your job you have the right to report that don't feel bad about it um if someone is genuinely being malicious then you don't have to feel bad about it and if someone is perhaps not aware of the fact that they're treating you this way, it helps to report it. And then it gets brought up and brought to their attention. So either way, your situation becomes resolved or it gets the attention it deserves. And sometimes you will find that maybe reporting to your direct manager um, doesn't yield the results that you are looking for. I would say try them anyways, just run it past their desk so they don't feel blindsided. And if they don't take the attention or give it the time that you need, don't be afraid to speak to someone else in the, in the company. And I mean that, like, don't go straight to the CEO because, you know, that can be inappropriate. But there are other managers, there are other platforms where you can speak to someone, maybe not even on an official, on the record basis, but to gain perspective or advice from a senior. And <laughs> I have to say, sometimes they're just toxic teams but usually in a workplace full of people, um, there are one or two gems that you can trust and you can get decent advice from. Last but not least, my third R is remove. Remove yourself. This means that you need to remove yourself from the organization, remove yourself from the team, remove yourself from the department. Whatever it is you can do to remove yourself from that person is ideal. Now, this is a recommendation only for situations that have gone, you know, beyond restraint and beyond reporting. If you have spoken up, you have restrained yourself and you've been cordial and you still are being harassed or being treated um, unfairly or being antagonized, then you need to remove yourself from that person for your own safety. <laughs> this is not even a matter of work anymore because they are definitely getting in the way of your work but you need to remove yourself for the care of your mental health and sometimes the care for your physical health because the person who's antagonizing you to that extent um, is just plain not safe to be around. Now, also remove can also be in less drastic situations where you can just excuse yourself from working with that person. And if you've reported your difficulties with them, management should be accepting that, listen, it's not that you don't want to do your job, you just like to be removed where this person is involved. And some situations allow for that, which is great. Also, I say this with the full knowledge that finding work in South Africa is difficult. So removing yourself might take the form of formulating an exit plan, working on your CV, sending out your CV. It might not be immediate, but as long as you're working on a way to get out of that situation, that is great. So those are my three R's of how to handle workplace conflict. Um, of course, these are quite widely scoped. Um, for more specific issues, more specific questions, you can always pop me an email and I'm happy to assist. All in all, your colleagues don't have to be your friends, but they do need to respect you as a colleague. They do need to respect you as a human being and as an equal in the company. Although you might have different positions, 
you are still in the same company and they need to respect the fact that you're on the same team you're pushing the same product um them being in opposition with you doesn't help anyone thank you so much for watching my video stick around check out my channel and make sure you hit that subscribe button ciao